Hello, this video will be a tutorial of how to detect differential item functioning, in other words, bias items using the diffr function in R. I'll go over what differential item functioning is, as well over as well as a specific example um, going over the R code and the output produced. So what is differential item functioning or items that function differentially? These are items where examinees in different groups differ in the probability of endorsing the item or in regard to educational tests, answer the item correctly, even if they have the same level of ability or level of the construct being measured by the instrument. Now, why is it even important to detect these items that function differentially? And one reason is that simply you might want a uh, to take out these items that might favor one group over another. One uh, popular example is, let's say you have a math test, and in, in the math test there's an item that for some reason it's a word problem and it's making a baseball reference. Now, one group might be might be more informed of what, what baseball is and, and more comfortably answer this item correctly, and and you know a group of people who do not know let's say specifically you're comparing international students versus non-international students in the united states um, and this is like the binary group that you're comparing an international student may not get the baseball analogy or reference and they may more likely um, answer this item incorrectly even though they possess the same level of, of ability as the uh, other person. Therefore, like you want to detect or uh, find some means to detect these uh, items that function differentially. Uh, I'll refer to them simply as diff items. So for the following analysis, I'll, I'll attempt to detect diff items between groups with two levels. There are other methods offered by the package that I plan to use, diff r. Uh, that can detect diff items across different groups uh, with more than two levels, but I'm just focusing on two level groups. Also, if you have more than two levels, you can try to dichotomize uh, the item in some way, like for example, ethnicity. One good example is if you're interested is, uh, let's say you have a number of groups in, in ethnicity, you can look at URM, uh, um, I mean, underrepresented minority versus non-underrepresented minority. So sometimes you, that can help simplify it. Um, but for now, I, I'm just going to go over two groups. And so the data set that I plan to use, uh, I've used this before, is the IQ data set. This, it's available on the site Open Psychometrics, and you can pretty much um, I pretty much loaded the data set already um, into the global environment. It's called IQ1 um, uh, with the function read.csv and file.choose. So uh, since this is only dichotomous responses, uh, what I'll be doing is first I'm just going to select the first 25 columns. Um, it's the it's the only ones referring to items. And then because I'm only looking at dichotomous items, uh, for this specific data set, all the values that equal to 10 are correct. And all the values that are less than 10 are wrong. So I'll flag in them as zero. So I'll run that here. So the next step, uh, also available in data set, is a group identifier of gender, uh, male and female. Um, it's, I'm going to basically, it's in this column in the original data set is column number 27. And what I'm doing is I'm merging it to the uh, binary data set that I generated, IQ bin. And I'm putting it together and I'm also calling it IQ bin again. Uh, this step isn't really necessary because you can actually just, the function I plan to use, you can actually just refer to it as a separate vector, but uh, I just like to include it. And this step here, I'm just simply renaming it, which is also not necessary, but it helps me keep track. 
Uh, but a quick background on the uh, IQ data set that I'm using. It's basically, it's 25 items and what examinees are tasked with is to recognize a pattern. Um, and it's modeled after the raving progressive matrices uh, with the goal of it or attempting to uh, basically understand intelligence on uh, some latent level with little cognitive loading like it doesn't require any background knowledge like you don't necessarily need uh, to know geometry or anything like that uh, you just pretty much um, try to recognize these patterns uh, in the test so and it's a then it's, uh, it's kind of like uh, used pretty widely and th this IQ data set is just modeled after it's not uh, what uh, this is not a uh, Raven progressive matrices exactly, but it's readily available and I downloaded it. Okay, so now like uh, after cleaning the quickly cleaning the data set, we can actually get into the analysis. So the function I'm using, um, which I've already installed, it's called diff r. Um, right now I'm just going to pretty much call it um, with the library function, and the first. Um, analysis that I'll run is the mental Hansel analysis. It's a non-IRT method that detects uniform differential item functioning uh, or diff items uh, between two groups that I'm currently focusing on. So there are two different types of diff item detection. It's uniform and non-uniform. So we're looking to detect items answered differently by examinees of the same ability level, but only differed in gender in this case. This, this uniform approach here specifically only considers group differences uniform or constant across ability levels or, or levels of ability. Uh, on the other hand, a, a non-uniform approach can pick up whether that group differ that that group difference sort of changes across uh, ability levels and uh, also here I'm with this specific MH test uh, it's the MH chi-square approach to diff item detection and it's a non IRT method in that here I'm using a total test score instead of estimating ability level so I'll, the function specifically that is used is diff mh. All you need to do is enter the name of the data set you're using, uh, the dichotomous uh, data set you're using, uh, identify the group, it, um, which is gender. Uh, the column name is gender on that data set. The focal name uh, is, set, is set here is equal to one. Uh, zero is referring to the reference group, and the focal group, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, is, is the name of the group that I'm looking at. Um, and I'm only looking at two groups uh, in this case. And purify. So, so purification, it addresses an issue of diff items in the test which is that diff items can mess with your analyses and cause you to wrongly detect other items as diff items. So instead of taking the results as is from your initial detection, you can instead allow an iterative approach that includes removing diff items detected uh, and checks them again until results are consistent in some way. Uh, and it, it's in, in order to do this, you just set purify is equal to true. Uh, however, you might also want to set the number of iterations. I think it's already set to, I believe, yeah, it's already set to uh, 10. Um, the reason why is because it could continuously iterate um, nonstop. Um, so this is the function. Um, I'll, let's run it. And let's look at the results. Uh, I named it test one, so let's see what the results look like. All right, so let me scroll to the top and go over the information available. Uh, 
so it gives you some notes. Um, so it indicates uh, about five iterations. Um, uh, it, it took five iterations for it to complete. And here you're given the chi-square st uh, statistics for each item. Now, a dot indicates marginal significance, but an asterisk indicates statistical significance, meaning that it's met some uh, threshold. Uh, in this case, it's, the threshold is 3.8415. Uh, here and all the ones that are statistically significant each uh, is an example of a diff item and it'll actually summarize it right here um, all the ones that are statistically significant uh, or items detected as diff items in this case out of the 25 items we have question number 16 and 25 in addition it also provides uh, effect sizes these are, and it actually labels the effect size, uh, A being a negligible, B moderate, and C a large effect, and it gives you that for each item. And you can see there, there are quite a few uh, large effect sizes. For now, I'm like uh, interested, but it's, it's good to provide additional information or give you a good sense uh, of the size. Another feature available is you can actually just simply plot the results. So you want to take a look at it. So let's see here. And it can give you like a graphical demonstration of the threshold um, that was met and the two items that went past it, Q16 and Q25, question 16 and 25. So these are the diff items like that we found um, using this method. Now, another method is the Lord's chi-square test. And um, once it's set to uh, 2PL or uh, 3PL, uh, first uh, you have to load the LTM package um, because it will run the, it's an IRT uh, method. And and same as before, this you find the code same as before, but I'm also setting the model to equal to the two parameter. Uh, right here, I'm setting model to equal two parameter IRT model. And now um, the function is called the floored. Um, all the other things is the same as before. And I will run it. And now let's look at the results. I called it test two, and let's look at these results. And let's, let me scroll to the top. And the first thing you can see um, after some of the notes is that a lot of them uh, are significant here. A lot of test uh, significance here also indicates uh, that it is a diff item. And pretty much all the items are significant except question 21 and 22. So these results are very different from uh, what we use using the MH method, uh, now using the Lord's method. So, so the, these results, you know, uh, obviously they're, they're not exactly consistent. And, you know, we can go back and uh, look at the differences in assumptions, you know, whether it's uniform or non-uniform, uh, different approaches, or whether it's uh, an impact of the um, other assumptions of the model, uh, this model looking at ability level as opposed to test score. Um, you can also look at past research. Uh, however, here, uh, fortunately, there's another option available, another function available in the package. It's called Dico diff. And, uh, and alternatives, what you can do is compare all the uh, different types of diff uh, analyses that you've ran um, or that you could run all together into one table. And what you can do is see whether which one is most consistent. Is, is one item consistently flagged as a diff item regardless of the analysis that you're using? Or, uh, in other words, which items are really biased across uh, uh, across these various different types of models? Um, I believe in the package, uh, there's about nine different uh, diff item uh, analyses you can uh, run. However, here I'm just going to look at three. 
uh, the MH method, Lord, the Lord method, and uh, another IRT method, the Raju method, uh, another popular one as well. Uh, I'll set the, for the IRT model, it's going to be set to two parameter. And, but unlike before, and, and similar to before, um, all the other indications are the same. Um, and I'll name it test3, and I'll also indicate show results. So here, it very neatly organizes, um, for, start from the top, it very neatly organizes all the information that, uh, the, all the detailed information and uh, how, how long it took, uh, how many iterations it took to converge right here. And it indicates for each item, um, each, uh, each row represents the item and each column, the first uh, few columns represent the actual analysis that was used. Um, the element, no diff means it wasn't detected as diff, uh, diff it was, and at the last column it will actually tell you how often. And right here you can see some of them, it was just two items, I mean two, two methods that found the item to be a diff item. Um, sometimes it was just one. And here, and the best thing to do is just look for, one simple way is just to look for all the items where all three uh, methods uh, indicate uh, indicate that the item is a diff item. Like for example, question number 16 and question number 25. So, so for these two items, um, it, you know, can, can be considered to be diff items uh, basically using this uh, method. Um, like one, and once you detect them, you can potentially take them out of your uh, test, or you can actually, you know, look at them um, because sometimes they might be the uh, the bias might it might be a little subtle, not be as obvious as that uh, baseball example that I used uh, earlier. Um, sometimes the the reason why the question might lead to Differences between groups might be pretty subtle, but it can be pretty interesting to further investigate. So you can pretty much maybe this item needs adjusting, it can be taken out, or it can provide some valuable insight on, on the test overall. So I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think, or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment. Thank you. I also apologize for all the background noise. I, I pretty much tried to just focus and, and not even address it, but uh, thank you for uh, sitting through to the end.